In this week, we will focus our attention on the issue of women and STEM. In the debate on gender equality, the complicated relationship between women and STEM plays a central role. STEM, these four letters, stand for sciences, technology, engineering and mathematics and represent an area of learning traditionally dominated to a great extent by men. Parents, Teachers, enterprises and economic researchers agree the most promising estimates for increase are for jobs in the STEM fields. Artificial intelligence will mean a radical transformation in traditionally analog contexts such as medicine, commerce, communications, macroeconomic studies, tourism and so forth. In the near future, all managerial roles will require STEM expertise. In the 80s, 37% of people with degrees in computer sciences were women. Today, this number is just 18%. Only 11% of the cybersecurity workforce are women. Social prejudice prevents the full expression of female talent and reduces reserves of social intelligence in these areas. A study done by GitHub, a software development portal, showed that if the gender of the author is unknown, code written by women is 4% more popular on average than code written by men. The study considered pull requests, in other words, the proposals for changes to make to the work of others, a sort of ITP review received by male and female programmers on their projects. And the results clearly show that the idea that women aren't good at STEM is just a stereotype. At elementary school, over half of the girls show a marked passion for STEM, but this dissipates gradually over the years. The most significant drop in interest in scientific and technological subjects is during adolescence, from 13 to 17 years of age. While four girls out of five say that studying STEM subjects creates many career opportunities, only 5% of 15-year-old Italian girls aspire to work in a technical or scientific profession. By using linear regression in their research, Coop, Krieg and Brownell found that high school women have lower academic self-concepts in math compared with their male peers. Furthermore, lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender students report being concerned that students with whom they work during class will perceive them as less competent in scientific studies if their sexual orientation or gender identity is revealed. The message from these studies is clear. A distorted social perception leads people to think that STEM subjects are for men and, what's more, for real men. When girls talk about STEM subjects, they say they are difficult subjects, they are easier for boys, they are not interesting, I'd be one of the few girls in the class, it stressed me out. All of this creates personal discouragement and self-exclusion from the STEM world. Girls have such a marked perception of the difficulties, it would seem that even if they studied, they wouldn't have a chance. Biology and mathematics are socially thought to be more feminine compared to IT and physics since in sociological imagination they are more easily linked to teaching according to an Accenture study done on an international scale. Prejudice can also affect male students who associate studying and being involved in STEM subjects with a nerdy lifestyle something for closed self-regarding circles. The biggest cliché still to be debunked is the widespread conviction that STEM professions are boring, 
with the work done in nondescript places where the walls are painted grey and maybe the spaces aren't even that healthy. This couldn't be further from the truth. Taking a closer look at STEM, you'll discover how tumor cells grow, how to solve the problem of dwindling natural resources, fight crime, help deaf people here and the blind see, solve water and food shortages and create more sustainable technologies. So it's important to explain to girls of all ages that all this can be done not only through the more traditionally female disciplines such as pedagogy, sociology, psychology and similar areas. In STEM they can also reach results they may have never imagined. There's no reason why women can't help build our future. The role of teachers, friends and parents is essential. A study conducted in 2015 by a group of researchers from Bologna University showed how our parents' gender stereotypes, and especially those of our mothers, have a negative impact on a girl's school performance in scientific subjects. In other words, if adults believe that on average mathematics is not for girls, their daughters will feel they are not as good as their classmates, regardless of their results. In looking at STAT scores across 67 countries and regions, STAT and Jury found that girls performed about as well or better than boys did in science in most countries. And in almost all countries, girls would have been capable of college-level science and math classes if they had enrolled in them. But when it comes to their relative strengths, even if an average girl was as good as an average boy at science, she was still likely to be even better at reading. Parents, teachers and friends motivate girls to focus on the subject they are relatively better at rather than to focus on STEM almost as if they want to protect girls from social competition with men. Religion and national culture play a significant role, but all things considered, this isn't that relevant. It is a fact, though, that only three of Milan's roads are named after female scientists. But let's consider the following two. 18% of American computer science college degrees go to women. Meanwhile, in Algeria, 41% of college graduates in the fields of science, technology, engineering and math, or STEM as it's known, are female. In Jordan, Qatar and the United Arab Emirates, boys are significantly less likely to feel comfortable working on math problems than girls are. According to a new paper published in Psychological Science by Stet and Jury at the University of Missouri, it could have to do with the fact that women in countries with higher gender inequality are simply seeking the clearest possible path to financial freedom, and often that path leads through STEM professions. Even in cultural contexts that are historically hostile to women, they have found a way to make the best of their talent. One such case is Margaret Hamilton, the IT businesswoman. Born in Indiana in 1936, she's the director of MIT Instrumentation Laboratory Software Engineering Divisions that developed the onboard software for the Apollo 11 space program. Hamilton's team solved the problems related to landing Apollo 11 on the moon, guaranteeing the success of the mission. In 1986, the scientist became an entrepreneur, setting up the company Hamilton Technologies in Cambridge, Massachusetts, specialized in the development of the so-called universal systems language 
based on the development before the fact paradigm for software and systems. Hamilton has published over 130 articles and papers on a variety of subjects. We know that the most fertile contexts in the STEM world are characterized by a rich variety of cultural, personal and social perspectives. For this reason, the United Nations 2030 Agenda considers gender equality and inclusion for women one of the 17 priorities in sustainable development processes. We can't leave half the population out of the picture if we want to be really innovative while creating a better world.